Hello everyone, my name is Francois and a few days ago I posted some images of this effect I created in 3ds Max. Since many of you seem to be interested, I thought I'd make a quick walkthrough of how I created this effect using the new array modifiers that ship with version 2023.2. 20, so you'll see that the setup is actually pretty simple. It starts with a plane which has a texture that looks like this. I ge actually generated it in After Effects using some fractal noise, which I stretched out using a fax fast box blur. And I also added a vector blur to give us this nice uh, wispy uh, style. It's actually quite easy to make different variations by animating the evolution or the scale. And it gives me some different results that I can use later on when I'm using the array modifier. Now back in 3ds Max, uh, you can see how... So I have a UVW map here that I don't need, so I, I can just remove it. You can see how I set up the array modifier. And I'm using a vertical spline that um, planes are going to be moving along. So that once they reach the end, they move back to the bottom. This is going to be very useful. Also, if you look at how my, my material is set up, you can see the three variations that I used here, which I add some colors to using a composite node. And uh, they all go back into a multi-sub object. In the array modifier, I can set up how many of the different sub-materials I want to use, simply by choosing here the amount from one to three or to two, or just one, or all the three. The array modifier then lets you uh, choose how you want to distribute the planes in their position or rotation. You can also edit their scale. You could go to a crazy high value if you liked. Let me put this back to, to a more regular number, like this maybe. or the amount that you're distributing along the other axes. It can give you some different effects as well. Now we don't want these to go into a straight line. So if you put all the properties like they used to be, that's why I'm using a path to form to give it a final shape. I actually have a second one set up right here in the foreground. And they can be easily moved around to accommodate the, um, the shot that you're trying to make. Like so. The pass to form is using a noise modifier to give more life to the overall effect. And if you look at the pass to form, in the smoke object, you can see that um, I'm using rotation and twist to further tweak the way I want it to be used. And that's interesting. And I can just animate its curves to decide how I want them to be eased along the animation. Now it's going to slowly accelerate. Very easy to manipulate. And I use a taper modifier before the path to form. And this also gives me some interesting options. So that's about it. This was my first opportunity to try out the new array modifier and it just goes to show how flexible it is and the possibilities it can offer. I hope this gives you some interesting ideas as well and well, thank you for watching.
While I have you here, I would also like to take the opportunity to talk about the games that I'm developing with my friend Quentin. Moons of Ardan is a city builder that takes place on several moons of a planetary system that we simulate in real time. You build your cities and send rockets to different locations to fulfill all of your population's needs. We are a team of two and there is still a lot of work to be done, but the game is available in early access on Steam. I hope you'll check it out. You can also go to our webpage and join our newsletter. Any bit of attention helps, so a big thanks to all of you who have watched this till the end.